How much of the, of, of the album and the ideas were shaped uh, by the time Julian kind of entered the picture? Uh, some of it was written, some of it wasn't. But we wanted it to be collaborative. So even the songs that were written, Julian had a big input on them. And, mm -hmm. you know, even the sound of this record, like there's so much of Julian's flavor in there as well, from the things that come out of his fingers to the things that come out of his mouth. You know, like his, uh, his voice is a, a distinct part of this record as well, and a distinct part of the mix too. Uh, because there are, there are a couple of songs I want to go in a little bit deeper, so mm -hmm. we'll see how far we get. Okay, cool. Well, one of the ones that stuck, uh, stood out for me was the Academy Award. Oh, right, okay, cool. Do you remember what kind of instigated that track? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, there's three narratives running through that, mm -hmm. that, that song. Um, the chorus, which is actually the last part that was written, uh, is, is talking about how we all carry you know, we all carry a camera with us mm. every day, everywhere we go. And uh, as a result, we perform for the camera. And in the, the song, sing about how the Academy Award for Good Times goes to you. Because we, what we're filming all the time is the good times. Mm. The good times that we're having. But it's not actual good times, it's, uh, it's the performance of a good time. Right. And th that's what you get the Academy Award for. You get the Academy Award for a performance. So that's what the performance of the good time. So that's one of the narratives. And the other is, uh, two plays on the phrase, show me the body. Uh, so you have, it's, it's what a private detective would say, you know, like, mm. show me the body, like, like, show me the evidence. Like, it's, it's the start of a murder case. Um, and uh, particularly the screen detectives like Columbo. I'm a huge <laughs> Columbo fan. I love Columbo. So like, and uh, w when he's investigating, he would always uh, play upon the vanity of the suspect. Mm. In the same way that we're using these cameras to solve our own vanity, uh, Columbo would play on the vanity of the suspect by kind of like my, my wife, my wife, she's, she's such a fan, she's such a fan. And so the suspect would go, oh, right, okay, yeah. And his wife never really existed. But like, so, so that's part of it. Uh, but it's also, uh, again, the generation, there's a, a Japanese term, hikikomori, which is the, the generation of people, men who stay at home. I don't, I know I'm not talking about just young boys, I'm not talking like guys well into their 30s who, who never leave home and see the world through a, an LCD screen and their experience of the world is through an LCD screen. And when they're showing the body, it's, well, if they're looking at a, a woman, they're, they're seeing her as an object, mm. uh, as a body, not as a human being through the, the screen of a, uh, of a computer. And it's, it's maybe, yeah, it's digital isolation again. And so it's maybe talking about that and it's talking about what we're reacting against with our form of, mm. uh, natural futurism, you know, like a rejection of the digital while understanding it. Right, because, it's, well, the, the song at first, uh, I don't know if you know the show Black Mirror, but it kind of reminded me of, of, of yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, there's that, something uh, about the Black Mirror in it, yeah, yeah. Um, but is Black, that Black Mirror, the Black Mirror, the Charlie Brooker yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. kind of uh, futurism, yes. but that Twilight Zone-esque. Yeah, 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 but yeah. it's a really dark song as well, like, you know, it, it, it and, and, and the, the, the narratives blur into each other where you, the, 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 the predator or the serial killer or whatever he is becomes like the laptop predator and, and mm. uh, it, it's... Yeah, I love Charlie Brooker and Black Mirror. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're so uh, disturbing. Right. But, but, I, and I think okay. this song's quite a disturbing song as well. I hope so, anyway. Well, that's, that's kind of the, the immediate link I made. But uh, what you mentioned just now, then, is, is, is kind of... Uh, Connecting with people, then, is that the ultimate goal, in, in, in essence, of, of what you do? Um, I mean, th that, that song's about isolation, really. No, but in the sense yeah, that yeah, because yeah. you're kind of rebelling or, or saying, well, maybe we should connect but, but, with I mean, people. It, 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 that song, it's, it, it's not like a moral judgment. Mm. It, it's an observation. Right. Uh, make your own moral judgment. I'm not going to tell you how, sure. how you should take your moral stance. It's just how, how, how we're observing it. That, that, that's all. But like, I, I do want it to be disturbing. I like writing disturbing music. I think there's a few disturbing songs on the record like, like uh, hopefully like like slow don't kill me slow i hope that's that disturbs you <laughs> but with with that element and then the, as you say uh, call it the disturbing element how do you musically work to it? is there is there um... we disturb each other <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a certain mood necessary in the in the, in the studio yeah it's you... got to be it's got to be the opposite of that it's, it's got to be uh not dissonant it's got to be harmonious mm. um You've got to be having a good time. So even if you're making the darkest music, you always hear, you can always tell if the band was enjoying making that music. Right. And like, like I, I listen to, say, 
uh, like Sabbath. I'm looking at a, 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 a Gibson SG on the wall, and I'm thinking like of Black Sabbath. And those are really dark, literally satanic records. But damn, the band sound like they're having a good time in that studio. Right. And that's the key to it. I know it's so glib and it's so obvious, but fuck it, you've got to have a good time, otherwise there's no point. Mm. All of the time. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. That's um, your philosophy. Yeah, a good time <laughs> all of the time. <laughs> there, there's one other song that kind of uh, <clears throat> struck my, well, I, I like most of them, but there's, there's one that, uh, st another one that sticks out for me, which is uh, Huck and Jim. Oh, yeah. So, so when, when did Mark Twain kind of enter the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fray? So the chorus was written on that first, and uh, we had the music, and the music sounded to us very American. It sounded like mm. slacker rock, you know, like, like uh, Silver Jews or um, Archers of Loaf or something like that. And uh, um, I was kind of joking, like I was literally playing the guitar going, hey everybody, we're going to America, going to America. <laughs> And then it didn't become a joke because I was saying, like, like, what would we do if we got went to America? What would we talk about? Well, we'd talk about the NHS. And I love that because it now gives me an opportunity in every interview to say <laughs> how much I love the NHS and how it saved my life and how it's in danger from our <clears throat> toxic government that we have right now who are trying to destroy it. And um, we need to do everything we can to fight that because we measure our civilization by how we look after our poor, our weak, and how we look after our sick, and how we educate everybody. That's the measure of a society. That's a measure mm. of a civilization. And that's why America, I don't know, is screwing up slightly underneath the, 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 the tangerine buffoon that they have there at the moment. And then if we were going to America, what do we do? We'd hang out. What do you do when you hang out in America? You sip 40s. And who would you sip 40s with? I want to find the greatest icon of America. Who is the figure of America? I was like, is it JFK? No, oh, no, no. Is it Santa Claus? No, no, no. Is it? I thought, it's the first figure I came across as a kid from American literature. But it's not one figure. Mm. It's two figures. Right. It's Huckleberry Finn, who has the name of the book. But the book Huckleberry Finn is not about Huckleberry Finn. It's about Huck and Jim. Right. The two of them together. Like, Huck and Jim, and, and I loved that book as a kid because it was an adventure story and remembering it as from the perspective of a naive six-year-old or however old I was when I read it, um, uh, or had it read to me rather, um, it's an adventure story and it's exciting. They're on the raft going down the river and they have all these different people that they meet and they get out of scrapes and there's all sorts of things happen. But um, when you look at it as an adult with a more oh, worldly perspective, you realize that Huck and Jim are actually a perfect metaphor for America and a great way to understand America because Huck Finn is the 14-year-old boy running away from his abusive, violent, alcoholic, white trash father. Um, and Jim is the slave who is running away from his supposedly benevolent uh, mistress who literally wants to sell him down the river, down the Mississippi right. to a plantation owner. And yeah, maybe you understand what America is today, or the problems that are in America today. And without being sort of like high and mighty and judgmental in America, it's also how we understand some of the problems that are in our societies. Or it's a clue to some degree, right. because ours is a, Britain's a post-colonial society, Holland is a post-colonial sure. society, and we are still living with the aftermath of the um, questionable deci decisions that were made by our forebears. Right. Final question then, with, with this in mind and kind of the, the political situation not only in, in Britain and, and uh, the US but kind of the world over at, at, at the moment, uh, always ascending, where, where does the title come from then? Yeah. Well, the music literally ascends, the, 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 the chords are ascending and I, I, I won't go into it too late, I don't think we have time to go into it, but the, the, the song is like a fantasy of, of ascending from a, 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 the most traumatic situation you could think of. I, I was literally imagining hanging from a rope from a, an airship as it ascends and like, do you let go or do you keep on holding on? And as you're facing that situation, you hallucinate with pain and fear and you want release, but you can't let go. You don't want to let go, but you want to let go. And do, when you let go, do you feel release and relief? And then when you do let go, then it becomes completely fantasy and it becomes hallucinatory and fantastical and you're, you're amongst the clouds and you don't know where you are, but you just feel that you are always ascending. Fair enough. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.